Hello. Today we will have an interesting session. And topic is optimization. Specifically, we will be looking at within the domain of business analytics. How to use optimization to reach a business decision and uh, specifically we'll be dealing with uh, a tool to do optimization of a business problem and this tool is uh, Microsoft Excel solver add-in let uh, first of all let me begin with the presentation to give you the basic concepts and uh, then we will deal with uh, what are the steps that are uh, used in uh, within optimization method of system study or business analytics how to uh, how to uh, reach uh, we will do a case dealing with uh, operations and supply chain analytics and then we will use this case to discuss and highlight the solver add-in functionalities so let me start with the presentation first and then we will go work on Excel Microsoft Solver Microsoft Excel Solver Add-in. As you know, that Microsoft as you know within the business analytics domain we have uh, three types of analytics one is called descriptive analytic other is called uh, predictive analytics and third one is called perspective and analytics so optimization is a key method used in prescriptive analytics and to do it Microsoft Excel solver add-in is just one of the software tools when you do a system study a system where a set of inputs are processed to deliver an output and these outputs and this processing is controlled whereas the outputs are analyzed to improve the inputs so when you have a system when you want to study it either you can experiment with the actual system to improve it but the, actually in production system it's very difficult to control it or to stop it or to experiment with it because it's a production system it's actually something that is working in real life so most of the time we end up doing experiments improvements on a model of a system these model can be a physical system they are used in engineering architecture sciences or they can be mathematical model as used in business or social sciences when you have these variables and the relationship between variables is known or at least you want to find the relationship between these variables which are deterministic or which are not random then you use analytical method these analytical methods are prescriptive analytic method or descriptive analytic method or they can be even I would say predictive analytical methods like regression and forecasting or when the variables are random in nature then we use simulation but today in particular we will be talk and which one to choose when like 
in today's discussion we are using optimization optimization method and some of the different techniques are linear programming integer programming mixed integer linear programming non linear programming and in this optimization we try to find the best solution or get a recommendation and these are best suited for deterministic problems with no uncertainty whereas regression which is part of predictive analytics we measure impact of independent variables on dependent variable so it is best suited when you want to establish relationship between variables simulation captures outcome of different policies in an uncertain environment and best suited for situations when uh, variables are random and the relationship between decisions and outcomes are not known so within prescriptive analytics let's look at uh, optimization model and in specifically we are discussing linear programming so when we when you want to use optimization method and you are dealing with linear programming first thing that you will do is uh, first use you have a decision model you make a decision model so you calculate what are the model parameters and like and what are the decision variables like what is the input variables that will give you a particular output uh, this thing will be more clear when we will have this case that we're going to discuss very soon so once you have this uh, when you make a model you have decision variables input and the output and then you formulate the objective functions how these input variables are related to the output variable output that you are requiring and then you identify what are the constraint normally invariably most of the business situation or the real life situation you work under a set of constraint and these constraint are normally non negative in nature so once you have set up this business decision model then after decision we call it a linear programming model in this case then uh, then you're looking to solve it by giving it some data and when you put in a data one uh, you need some some tool actually a so, uh, a mathematical tool or in this case a software tool to solve the that mathematical model in this case linear programming model very quickly and ms excel is that particular tool it gives you it sets up constraint and objective function you start in microsoft excel you start solver add in and then you set up constraint and objective function in solver and you choose the option that you want once you say solve it will generate a solution and then you analyze the result let's look at a particular example what i just spoken it may be not so clear to the people who are uh, going through the concept of uh, linear programming for the first time we will have one more session where we will be discussing about uh, linear pro programming and then we have a separate session a one more video where we will be discussing about optimization mm -hmm. method within prescriptive analytics so there will be two more sessions or two separate session each dealing with optimization and then one dealing with linear programming but this specific session we will be discussing more on uh, if you have a optimization method you are using and you are having a linear programming so equations are using linear programming then how to use basically a software add in which is a microsoft excel so solver so basically it's more about how to use a tool to use uh, to do the linear programming and so it's so we'll be putting our focus around that let's look one example that will make the things clear to you uh, this particular example is a political communication example we all have seen political campaign 
and uh, normally this is particular case is about a candidate who is fighting a general election and uh, we have a set of data set given to us we will quickly look at it but we will follow the particular these steps step number one as i already told is we define the decision variables step number two we formulate the objective function step number three we identify the constraint and then we make these constraint non-negative we will come back to it and then we will open up the solver in the microsoft excel we and uh, then we this is a particular tool we'll this is here it's i've written to you within this within microsoft excel you go to a file option then the add-ins the solver add-in is there we'll come back to it first let me look at the data let's go to microsoft excel to make the things more clear to you Okay, here is the example that I'm talking about in political uh, communication, this particular case about ads. A candidate is fighting election. He is doing a political campaign. He want to put an ad in TV and then he want to put advertisements in radio. Cost per ad in TV is $1,200 cost for radio ad is $400 once you put a TV ad it reaches 25,000 people a voters once you put a radio it reaches 12,500 voters then constraint is uh, when he went and talked to a particular ad agency they say minimum they need uh, 30 ads per week so there's a minimum requirements on TV and then maximum requirements on then there's a maximum requirements on radio each radio ad is $400 12,500 is a voter reach but maximum he can put radio ads per week are 60 so these two so we let's quickly put this thing in uh, we want to put this information this data in uh, sort of a step that we just discuss so we go back to so let's say if i have to put in mathematical equation form this is how it's gonna look like So he, this particular campaign candidate, he want to minimize his total budget. And uh, you can look at per, so our decision variable. So first we want to set up a model and then this uh, minimize the weekly budget where $1,200 into number of TV ads plus 400, the number of radio ads. So this is his total budget. He want to minimize it weekly budget. And then we look at some of the constraints. So these are the constraint. Each TV spot is reaches 25,000 voters. And each radio ad reaches 12,500 voters. So when we multiply X1 into 25,000 plus 12,500 in X2, it should be less than or equal to 1 million which is a voter reach total 1 million voters are there so you want to reach them every week constraint on tv ad the decision variable x1 which is number of tv ads so they constraint it has to be more than 30 per week then the constraint on radio that these radio ads should be less than 60 per week and non-negative constraint is that these ads, number of ads on TV and radio should be more than zero. So if we have, so this is a mathematical equation. Let's see how it's gonna work in Excel. So we go back to Excel and then we try to put this thing 
in proper format this is x1 number of media ads per week on TV this is radio so I can make it 2 I can make 1 so these are our x1 this is x2 voter reach let's say put each one of them one voter reach is C8 which is number of media ads per week multiplied by the reach per ad so in this case it's 25,000 but if I pick two TV ads then it increases voter reach increases 50 this particular Excel so calculation is shown here in this cell so radio for same voter reach per radio ad is 12,500 suppose I put it 3 then it will show here 37,500 cost again is multiplication of number of TV ads per week and then it is multiplied by cost per ad that is shown here number of for radio cost is number of ads in radio per week multiplied by cost per ad which is shown here total cost is num cost of TV campaign cost plus radio campaign cost per week so that's a total campaign cost per week voter reach is number of voters reached by TV plus number of voters reached per, by radio these are the constraint and then this is the constraint that total voters has to be 1 million minimum number of TV spots 30 maximum number of radio spots 60 so let's, let's see how to so this is sort of we have mathematical equations we have all the calculation what if analysis we have shown now let's look at how to use solver to do the this particular optimization problem so that we can optimize the number of so what we are looking at uh, we are trying to figure out we want to have these are two decision variable we want to optimize number of TV ads plus number of radio ads subject to our constraints that total voter should be less than 1 million so these are the constraint number of TV ads and this the number of radios spot ad spots per week and we have a constraint so we want to minimize we want to reach the people within constraint but while we want to minimize our weekly budget for the political campaign so weekly budget is actually the cost so we what we're gonna do is uh, when we Microsoft Excel where we have option uh, click when we click on file and there's an op option menu item there on the left hand side there's a thing called add-in we go to add-in and then we have a thing called manage Excel add-in within this com add-ins action XML disable item so click on Excel add-in and then you click on go you see a lot of ads in which are analysis tool pack add-in is available analysis tool pack VB is available euro currency tools is available solver add-ins is available so two particular add-ins which we'll be using in our discussion uh, this discussion and subsequent videos are analysis tool pack that is predominantly used in descriptive and predictive analytics and solver add-in which is used in prescriptive analytics specifically optimization so we click OK and then on the top top menu we you have a thing called data we click on data and then we you see on the top right hand side the one data analysis is there add-in is there but we don't select it we select solver and this thing this small window opens up 
and in this particular case now let's look come back to our uh, political campaign case and we want to minimize this is our total cost so this is our objective is to minimize the total cost we choose minimize by changing the variable cell so we task but who are the decision variables and we select this and this then it asks for the constraint so I have to add constraint my first constraint is my number of TV ads per week has to be more than 30 then my radio ads less than equal to 60 and then my water reach has to be less than equal to 1 million per week I say ok so you see all the three constraints are set here where these are my decision variables this is my objective which I so we can have objective can be set to max minimize maximization or it can set to a particular value a particular goal and by changing the variable cell these are the constraint once you have a particular constraint you can change it to and these normally constraint are less than equal to equal to greater than equal to integer binary or difference so anyway we are okay with what we have selected so and then here both the decision variables you cannot have less than zero TV ads so it can be zero or more so we make our decision variable which is x1 and x2 which are TV ad and radio ad spots we make them unconstrained variable non-negative we have to select select a solving method I'll discuss later in PPT we have three method one is called non-linear simplex linear programming and evolutionary so because we are using C linear programming we choose simplex linear programming and then we click on solve so once we click on solve Yeah, looks like there is an issue we will looks like there is an issue let me go back just a minute let me again check if I'm meeting my so we want to minimize 1200 x1 plus 400 x2 subject to x1 greater than 30 x2 less than equal to 60 so, so this has to be the c8 more than equal to f8 c9 Let's then go to F9 G10 less than equal to 10 
and then we want to minimize So we select, we say keep solver solution and we select when it asks for three reports, we select all the three reports, answer, sensitivity and limits and we click OK. So when we click OK, you will see limit report, answer report, sensitivity report three reports are generated we and then you see this thing was one one it has become 30 and zero and you can see initially the original value was one TV spot and one radio spot and final value is 30 and zero and this is just for illustration purpose you may get a different value but it actually depending on a setting but uh, I think the process is right and uh, illustration is right and uh, so if you get some other value don't get disheartened it may be because of your settings and if you read this uh, answer report you will see constraint so we had a constraint so TV ad maximum it could be 30 per week this is binding so that's how it shows this slack zero so if you increase it the budget will increase we are trying to minimize radio spots zero it's non-binding so it te tells you about constraint it tells you about what is the final values of both the decision variables and then what is the final value of the objective function enough oh this is where the problem is okay okay so we found a prob so we are not because I was finding something fishy here probably cost so this cost has to be equal to yeah some problem in our this multiplied by cost per yeah this is where the problem is and 
this equal to this multiplied by yeah now let's let's solve the problem now see if anything changes nothing changes so it looks like our report is coming out to be okay so we have to stick to it yeah this is 36,000 actually this is what our budget is So we have found out an optimal solution that we should put 30 ads on TV and radio. We should not put ads. This will maximize. It will minimize our budget as well as uh, maximize set whatever meet our constraints. So today we have discussed uh, simplex linear programming within the optimization method but there are other different solution approaches that exist in solver one is called uh, other besides simplex linear programming is called GRG nonlinear and evolutionary. And within when you select options within the all models dealing with linear programming and others first is constraint it's a constraint is degree of precision a specific degree how much relation between cell reference and constraint value can be violated the smaller the number higher the constraint precision then the automatic scaling sometimes some extreme values or very small values they can affect the accuracy of solutions so whether decision variable data set data values or constraint values or objective function values so it automatic scaling help to rescale them to comparable magnitude iterations is number of iterations before the solver gives a solution or optimal solution then sometimes it also asks for you can ignore integer constraints if you don't want because in linear programming your uh, variables can be both integer as well as fractional values so sometimes we want to you know we want to put this integer constraint uh, conditionality there integer optimality percentage can be set to maximum percentage difference between the objective value of the suggested solution and the truly objective so sometimes the suggested solution and what is truly optimal they could be difference but you can set the difference between them as a decision maker you can choose the length of time maximum time a number of tries basically the iteration that are done before the solver reaches its final uh, solution and it gives its recommendation in GRG non linear there are options available first is our convergence and convergence basically it integrates the 
relative change between the last five iterations. So if there's no much difference between the last five iterations, then solver says that solver has converged to the current solution and it stops further attempts to give you a optimized solution. So this is what is meant by you can even signify give a value to it beside what is given as a default value. Derivative it works nonlinear method works on first derivative approach. So it use first derivative approximator solution. Then multi start it can simul when you start a nonlinear optimization. Then it start to run several solution at different from different arbitrary points. So you can cho choose that option if you want. Normally we would not click on those options. Evolutionary option is a third one if you don't choose linear programming and you also don't choose non-linear programming and if you, you can choose evolutionary option. Basically when we select uh, linear programming which is all model options including linear programming then uh, we are talking about uh, concept of linearity. And concept of linearity is basically the additivity. And uh, it also talks about, uh, you know, how the, when you x1 will give you certain value, then x2 will give you a value which is more than that. So that is a concept of linearity and the linear increase that we're talking about. But in non-linear programming, when uh, decision variables could be have a multiplier effect or exponential effect so then those type of options are in the GI non-linear they we use non-linear programming but sometimes we try to find uh, we have to deal with uh, evolutionary log algorithm and then uh, then we use evolutionary options so genetic algorithm is one example of evolutionary methods and it creates initials in genetic evolutionary method we create initial set of possible solutions initial pollution population and calculate the value objective function for each member of the initial population and then within we select some well members which are uh, which are good value of this objective function then apply mutation to generate a new set of solutions and then this uh, selection of uh, initial population and then mutation continues until we found a satisfactory solution and again the cons options available in this evolutionary methods are evolutionary option of linear programming method is uh, convergence so it talks same as convergence as we talk in earlier when the last five iteration it look at the relative change and uh, it doesn't find that the difference is not more than what value you specify then it will say that solver has converged to the current solution and it stops the further attempts and give you the recommendation. Mutation is a portion of member of given population which are altered or muted to create a new trial solution. So for each generation, so it's a portion of population that is muted. And the number of population size, number of members in population. Random seed is used to generate a random choice in the evolution method and it, you can put integer value there and it, maximum time is like in evolution method the solver will try to give you a solution an objective function and it, maximum number of time is like how many seconds it can keep on trying and then it will give you that objective value objective function value 
if there is no improvement within that it will say it is the final objective value it gives it recommendation so, sometime it's in evolution method it is better to give bounds on variables uh, so if you give upper and lower bound no decision variables then the performance of evolutionary method improves so we can quickly go back and whatever i've discussed with you and we can quickly see how where it is in microsoft excel solver so when we were in solver you can see when you click on this and this is a solver window when you click on options you'll see whatever we just discussed in all method the constraint precision is set up we don't check anything on automatic scaling iteration methods solving limit times and all this thing but you can choose I discuss with you if you want to click any of these options you can choose in convergence nonlinear you can see it's a forward derivative we are using convergence is 0 0.001 multi start we are not population side random seed we have not put anything anyway we are not i have not shown you an example on nonlinear programming we worked on linear programming to to show you but definitely in my next videos we will be showing you how to use solver to do nonlinear programming and how to use solver to do to use evolutionary options and how to come up with the recommended solution of an optimization case so convergence again evolutionary you can see convergence is 0 0.001 mutation quite is 0 0.07 population size not given here maximum time is 30 seconds and then without improvements then it will stop so this is uh, these are different options available when we choose a solving method so we i just showed you an example using simplex linear programming so thank you very much i hope you liked my video and I look forward to continue discussion with you and in my next videos I will share with you how to use Microsoft Excel solver to do nonlinear programming using optimization using nonlinear programming and then subsequently I will also share with you using Microsoft Excel to do optimization problems using evolutionary method and uh, we will uh, will work on these uh, different methods uh, using different cases and we will have some very interesting business problems and cases uh, to give you an illustration how to use it in practical and how to use the optimization technique to solve the common business problems most of the problems that we will be discussing in my subsequent videos will be related to operations and supply chain and in our day to day and how the optimization and subsequently predictive analytics is used to help uh, decision making in situations dealing with operations supply chain so i hope you like this video i hope uh, that you'll find the information useful and i will interact with you in my next video to bring you a better business case and give you little more insights on how to use microsoft excel in uh, different uh, business cases dealing with optimization method thank you very much